Hi, my name is Sever Restoran and I'm going to present our paper Generative Modeling with Inverse Heat Dissipation. And this was joint work with my advisors, Markus Heinonen and Arno Solin. So the background here are diffusion models, which are these generative models that generate images by denoising, right? So usually they are treated as this kind of hierarchical latent variable model uh, that are trained using some form of the variational lower bound uh, using an inference distribution that is this Marco chain of adding noise on top of noise. Now it is well known that these diffusion models kind of implicitly generate images such that the core structure is determined first and the fine structure later on. And in the paper we actually explain this or give an explanation to this using the empirical power law nature of frequencies in images. Uh, however, this is only implicit. And mathematically, the forward process doesn't really even take into account the fact that the pixels are next to each other, or neither does it, does it take into account the fact or the multi natural multiscale behavior of, of images. So the question that we ask in the paper is then, so can we incorporate the multiscale multi nature of images uh, into a diffusion-like model in a way that is as explicit as possible? And what kinds of properties will such a model result in? So here's the big picture. So instead of purely noising the image, we kind of melt it. So if you can think of the image as a coat of ice cream that gets melted into a low resolution version of the original ice cream. And to do this, we use this heat dissipation process. Uh, and to be more formal, we take the image and run the 2D heat equation over the surface of the image. And the heat equation is now a partial differential equation that blurs out the image and in some limit, limit is actually equivalent to Gaussian blur. So instead of erasing the original information content by pure noising, uh, we erase it by effectively averaging out the image or something of that sort. So the reverse generative process then explicitly and in a very visually obvious way then focuses only on certain resolutions at each step of generation and it looks like something like this. And it turns out that the heat equation for our process is actually very easy to evaluate efficiently using the fast Fourier transform. Uh, so the way to train a model like this is to use the diffusion latent variable model, but with some small modifications. So instead of pure noising, the forward process is replaced by running the heat equation over the image and then adding a small amount of constant noise that makes the process kind of formally non-invertible. And it turns out but the Marco chain is not really needed here, and instead a factorized inverse process works. So the generative process is a Marco chain as usual. And here's what it looks like on Amnist. Generation focuses on low resolution features in the beginning and high resolution features in the end. And it also works on some more complex datasets, such as AFHQ. And if we start generation from the same starting point, we get multiple images with the same average colorings, which is kind of cool. Now, with these more complex data sets than Amnist, we do notice that the genetic quality is not as good as with standard diffusion models. Uh, but there are some other interesting qualities though, and possibly the, these qualities do tell us something of wider importance as well. So for instance, so if we do interpolations in the latent space of our model and compare it to the interpolations in similar uh, standard diffusion models, we notice that the results are more smooth. So the one on the right here is now our model and the ones on the left here are standard diffusion model variants. So it seems that using blurring in the forward process can set a sort of, sort of smoothness prior over images. There are other properties as well, and please go check out the paper for those. So to conclude, a generative model like this is possible to formulate in the first place. Uh, the model has some similar benefits to the standard diffusion models. For instance, it is very easy to train. And the model does induce some interesting properties that are not present in the standard diffusion models. And one hope here is that these results can be used to reason about what, what kinds of other models could, could work as well and what kinds of properties could these models uh, kind of result in as well. Well, yeah, so thanks for listening.